For the sixth straight week, we welcome you to Manhattan, New York, as we approach a jam-packed Hammerstein Ballroom. This is the 2024 Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Last week, the quarterfinal round kicked off. We saw Dragon Lee as well as Wesley advance. Who is going to join them in the semifinals this Sunday afternoon? Four superstars remain on the right side of the bracket. Two bouts this afternoon. Only two names are moving on to the semis next Sunday. Coming up in moments, it is Chad Gable. It is Frankie Kazarian. And we take you back to several weeks ago right here in Midtown Manhattan. TNA legend Frankie Kazarian gracing a WWE ring for the very first time and outlasting the LWO's Joaquin Wilde. As for Chad Gable, a technical wrestling masterclass as he went one-on-one -on -one with another TNA superstar and the octopus, Jonathan Gresham. A great contest, Chad Gable showing his resilience and getting the victory in the back half of it. So now we look towards your first of two quarterfinal matches on this Sunday afternoon. It is SmackDown's Chad Gable, one-on-one -on -one with TNA Wrestling's Frankie Kazarian. A first-time ever matchup. There's two more spots in the semifinals. Who's going to fill one of those spots? We find out right here, right now. Chad Gable set to make the ring walk in Midtown Manhattan. It was all or nothing for Chad Gable in the first round of the CWC several weeks ago. Gable was coming into this tournament on a bit of a losing streak on SmackDown, really ever since he fell short to Carmelo Hayes for the United States Championship back in Minneapolis, his hometown at Saturday night's main event in August. Gable found himself on a bit of a downward spiral but able to turn his luck around, defeating Jonathan Gresham in the first round of the tournament just a few weeks back. Can he keep his momentum sky high? Can he turn away another TNA representative and a former X Division champion in Frankie Kazarian? Dare I say, one of the greatest superstars to ever grace a TNA ring that is yet to hold a world championship. Kaz may have his day, but on this Sunday afternoon, all focus is on the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. And his opponent from California, weighing in at 203 pounds, Frankie Certainly keeping up a busy schedule between the CWC and TNA, but a veteran of the squared circle, SoCal born Frankie Kazarian, willing to do anything it takes to make an impact inside a WWE ring. The opportunity that lies ahead for the winner of the CWC. Of course, we got Tyler Bay participating later on this afternoon, defending his Cruiserweight Championship through each and any round of this tournament that he competes in. You gotta believe whoever wins this matchup is hoping and praying that Tyler Bate is gonna retain later this afternoon so they can get their opportunity at said Cruiserweight title. That is jumping far ahead. We still have two bouts to go here in Midtown Manhattan, and it is anybody's ball game. Last week, we saw Dragon Lee and Wesley advance out of the quarterfinals and make their way to the semis next week. Who is going to join them? We start to find out. Chad Patton calling for the bell. This one is underway. Oh, Frankie Kazarian spinning heel kick right out of the get-go, but it knocked Chad Gable's lights out. Not just yet, but you gotta commend the effort of the veteran. Frankie Kazarian has been in the ring with so many legendary superstars, many of which have graced a WWE ring. Look at names like AJ Styles, Jeff Hardy, Samoa Joe, Christian Cage. I mean, the list goes on and on. Kaz has been in the ring with so many superstars that have graced this WWE ring before. But now getting his opportunity to make his own mark on this canvas over the last several weeks. And Kaz is looking to make the most of it. Springboard going high risk early, but Chad Gable had that leg drop scouted. So Kaz utilize those long limbs of his a couple of weeks ago against Joaquin Wild. Several springboard maneuvers that helped him inevitably get the victory. Chad Gable, a student of the game, has obviously done his homework. 
It's not looking to fall short to this TNA veteran in Kaz. Chad Gable, a man who has been seeking championship gold and just seeking some sort of gold here in WWE. Some sort of almost acknowledgement for all of his hard work over the last 12 months and change. Remember last year at the Cruiserweight Classic Finale, we saw a non-tournament matchup between Chad Gable and Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship that night. Gable was unsuccessful. We've seen Alpha Academy challenge for the tag team titles earlier this year. Gable, as we mentioned, challenged for the United States Championship. But a lot of losses have really started to get into Chad Gable's mind. He is really starting to show a different side, a little bit more of an aggressive side. It was really the dictator of the pace in that matchup against Jonathan Gresham several weeks ago. And I'm sure Gable would love to ride that same wave here in Midtown tonight. Gable now going to the top. Damn near three quarters of the way across the ring with that headbutt. Almost putting Kaz away early, but the veteran's still alive. That is what we're talking about. Chad Gable just peeling back and showing a new layer. This is what Gable had to do to break out of that slump that he was in on SmackDown. Starting to find new luck here in the Cruiserweight Classic. And Chad Gable as well has been making the ring walk throughout this tournament on his lonesome. We have not seen Otis, we have not seen Maxine Dupree. Gotta wonder where they lie as Chad Gable begins to refocus and resharpen his tool set. Is Gable focused on building the Alpha Academy or is he becoming a more self-centered individual focused on his own success? Questions that remain answers as Frankie Kazarian looks to change the tides of this contest. Gable on the outside, he better not look up because I don't think he's gonna like the incoming traffic. Suicide dive to the outside. Frankie Kazarian letting loose here in Manhattan, New York. Gable now set inside the ring. There's a springboard that does deliver. Frog splash to the lower back. And that is ingenious by Kazarian, not getting the victory that time, but what Kaz may have saw was an opportunity to weaken Gable, take out his strength. You take out that lower back, you may be taking out a lot of the suplex variations that Chad Gable houses in his arsenal. All remains to be seen in due time as this matchup progresses if that frog splash moment ago will pay Kaz dividends or will Chad Gable be able to start another rally? Obvious first time ever matchup between these two individuals. Gable off the double underhook powerbomb dead center of the ring. Only going to be a one count. It's just the man in the zebra stripes. That's referee Chad Patton from SmackDown. Frankie Kazarian getting set over the top rope. Nothing pretty about it. Well, hold on here. Kaz is on the outside. Gable's going to the top. Oh, wow. Springboard drop kick right to ringside. You want to talk about unshowing, peeling back the layers, and showing a new side. Look no further. Chad Gable is hell-bent on victory. Perched on the top rope, comes soaring down the ringside and delivers that drop kick right to the heart of Kaz. What Gable's got to do is not horse around with this audience. He's got to get Kazarian back inside the ring and get a three count here. Has to create some separation. Both men going for a shot. Frankie Kazarian may not have landed. But what he did do is create enough separation to get back inside the ring. And now it's Kaz looking to find a way back into this matchup. Kaz has got some of that old school in him. Art Anderson would have been hella proud of that spine buster. Off the knee, Chad Gable may be a bit rocked. Frankie Kazarian... Starting to see some daylight on the horizon after an onslaught by Gable at ringside. Oh, another drop kick. Has his eyeing up the corner a couple of times throughout this matchup, if you notice. Both times he's turned his back. Chad Gable has been right there to go on the attack. Look at the bridge by Gable. We talked about if that frog splash earlier on was going to affect the lower back, and clearly Chad Gable has got enough adrenaline and Will Power to fight through it. Spanish flying dead center of the canvas. 
And another kick out by Gable. How impressive by Kazarian. No need for the rope. Springs on his own feet and delivers one hell of a maneuver. Now going to the top. Goes for the leg drop again. But Gable just saw it coming. No water in the pool. A crash out by Kaz. Chad Gable drops him on his dome. Not a lot of sustained momentum. When you look up and down this matchup thus far, just goes to show you the homework that has been done by these two individuals. Having the last two weeks to scout their opponent obviously has paid them dividends. Chad Gable, how hungry he has been for championship gold, how hungry he has been for victory. Not looking to see Kaz play spoiler. And if this keeps up, Gable may be getting his hand raised. Double Germans. And he's going for the hat trick, not too far from the house of the Rangers. Dragging Frankie Kazarian away from the ropes to ensure there will be a rope break. Kaz forced to use any ounce of energy he had left to make sure this matchup kept going. Has rolled to the outside. Gable not looking to give him any R&R. &R. Suicide dive of his own. Chad Gable extra aggressive. Unleashing maneuvers that we have not seen. Whether it's been some time or maybe not ever. Out of the arsenal of Gable. Kaz right to the ring post. Chad Gable thought he had him. Off those hat tricks of Germans. But Frankie Kazarian showing why he is a well-respected veteran of this industry. A multiple time over. TNA X Division Champion. TNA Tag Team Champion. Dare I say one of the greatest wrestlers in that industry. In that company that has never held the World Championship. Series of strikes. Chad Gable looking dazed again. Face first he goes. And the same maneuver that put away the LWO's Joaquin Wilde a few weeks ago, unfortunately, does not put Cass past the finish line yet. Chad Gable getting caught. Oh, what's Cass got in mind? Slingshot DDT. Right on the hardest part of the ring. Gable ever days. Cass going for a springboard. Oh. Oh, miscalculated it there. That is the nature of the game, folks. They don't call it high risk, high reward for nothing. I don't know if Kaz slipped up at the last second, didn't get all the reach he needed off the ropes. Crashing and burning. Luckily, Chad Gable is still trying to get his wits about him. Neither man able to capitalize at the current moment. Well, here comes Kaz making up for it. Again, showing you why he has earned his stripes inside of that ring. Tries to go for the leg drop. It has been his own detriment. Gable now with one more shot to rally as we start to get into the war of attrition, if you will. Overhead throw. Kaz off the third misstep of the leg drop in this contest. Finds himself looking up at the lights of Hammerstein Ballroom. Frankie Kazarian. Own worst enemy when it comes to trying to deliver that leg drop multiple times over in this matchup. You gotta commend the effort. But Chad Gable has come with the answers to the test and he's looking for an A+. Face first goes Kaz. This one's over. What a matchup here in Midtown. One hell of an effort by the TNA legend, no doubt about it, and Frankie Kazarian. But to the victor goes the spoils. Chad Gable entered the CWC looking to turn his momentum around. So far, so good. He advances to next week's semifinals. Who will meet him there? Pete Dunne, Tyler Bate. It's coming up in moments live from Manhattan, New York. When the tension rises and the war on the battlefield begins, there is only one thing for these superstars to do. 
survive. Coming your way on Saturday night, November 16th, for the Kia Center in Orlando, Florida. Witness the 2024 edition of the Fall Classic as the superstars of Raw and SmackDown, along with No Nation Gaming channel memberships, proudly present Survivor Series! We are just mere weeks away from my personal favorite event of the year. It is the Fall Classic Survivor Series, which of course will feature not one but two War Games matches. That is coming up on the 16th of November, but we got a pit stop this coming Saturday in Tallahassee, Florida. It's for No Nation Gaming channel members only. It is Fall Brawl. You're not going to want to miss it. The World Tag Team titles from Raw will be on the line and so much more. Hit the join button down below or link up in the cards and become a No Nation Gaming channel member. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. Well, coming up next here in Hammerstein Ballroom, two gentlemen that know each other extremely well. The Bruiserweight Pete Dunn, the big strong boy Tyler Bate. It's a quarterfinal matchup for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. We take you back to just two weeks ago right here in Hammerstein. Pete Dunn one-on-one -on -one with NXT's Scottish Supernova, Noam Dar. A hard-hitting bout that saw Pete Dunn with his hand raised on the other side of the bell. Tyler Bate, of course, locking horns with his rival in the Irish Ace, J.D. McDonough, a physical contest from bell to bell as well. Tyler Bate retaining his championship and moving on to right here, right now. Talk about the opportunity that Tyler Bate has afforded every man who steps into the ring with him throughout this tournament. As long as he advances, that championship promises to continue to be on the line. But you are looking at the man who has beaten Tyler Bate before and has proven his worth as a champion here in the WWE. The Bruiserweight, Pete Dunne has been on a tear on SmackDown and it has bled right in to the CWC. You see in the credentials, a former Intercontinental Champion, not once but twice, former World Tag Team Champion over a Monday Night Roll as well, and Pete Dunne. You want to talk about that history with Tyler Bate? He is the man that spoiled Tyler Bate's NXT United Kingdom Championship reign all the way back in 2017. You cannot look past the man they call the Bruiserweight on this Sunday afternoon. We saw the physical outing that not only in the punishment that he inflicted, but the pain he endured against Scottish Supernova, no Amdar just two weeks ago. Pete Dunn willing to travel any lengths, not looking to leave any stone unturned. He will go to hell and back if it means getting his hand raised and leaving with gold. But this man, ever since the month of July, has held that Cruiserweight Championship as proud as he can be. Over 100 days as the champion. And this is not the first time that Tyler Bate is putting that title on the line against Pete Dunne during this championship reign. These two men met a few months back on SmackDown in a contest that was spoiled by a man these two know very well in JD McDonough. Tyler Bate finally 
burying that story with JD just a few weeks ago, sending the Irish Devil not only out of this tournament, but to the back of the line of the Cruiserweight title division. But now Pete Dunn gets another opportunity, and he can't say he hasn't earned it. Defeating JD McDonough in a Falls Count Anywhere match last month on SmackDown. Now, of course, the no the victory, excuse me, over Noam Dar two weeks ago now. One-on-one -on -one with Tyler Bate, just as these two men I'm sure would love. International superstars gracing these New York soils here in Midtown Manhattan. The first round is off the charts. The quarterfinals has met that energy. Who will score the final spot? In the semi-final round next week, Pete Dunne, Tyler Bate, the titles on the line. Let us set things down to the ring for Mike Rome and the match introductions. Introducing the challenger from Birmingham, England, weighing in at 205 pounds, the bruiser, Wayne Pete Dunne. And his opponent from Dudley, England, weighing in at 175 pounds, the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Tyler Bates. Well, I am looking forward to this one, and so is this jam-packed audience here in the legendary Hammerstein Ballroom. Tyler Bates. Gutsy as all hell to put his championship on the line throughout this tournament. Now his second defense. Found luck against the Irish Ace. But will he find that same luck? Will Lightning strike twice in the same spot? Now against Pete Dunne. It is your final quarterfinal bout. Who meets Chad Gable in the semifinals? The bell has sounded and we are underway to finding out. Senior referee Charles Robinson set to officiate this contest between two men who I'm sure have a great respect for each other in Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. When that bell sounds, you don't need to tell these two that it's time to hold no punches. They know exactly what they got to do to get victory on this Sunday afternoon and try to advance in the CWC. We have talked about in great lengths what this tournament did for Ilya Dragunov winning it last year. Winning this tournament propelled him on to become a member of the SmackDown brand. And 12 months later, we look at the Mad Dragon as one of the faces of Thursday nights. Could that be waiting for one of the men who is still left in this tournament to be in the bright lights of World Wrestling Entertainment? Certainly Tyler Bate, already a champion in his own right. He's going to continue to be a fighting champion and prove himself worthy of the gold, but Pete Dunne all over the big strong boy and trying to slow him down in the early moments. Pete Dunne obviously loves to break things down to a brawl, loves to really tear apart his opponent bone by bone, rip apart the flesh if he needs to. Pete Dunne absolutely a brutalizer inside of that ring, and those are the maneuvers that Tyler Bate is going to have to rely on on this Sunday afternoon to try to get through his opponent, wow, explosiveness from the champion, follows it up with a shooting star. Tyler Bay, ever impressive, showing why he was able to not only win the gold all the way back in London, England, in the month of July at Money in the Bank, but retain it ever since. Oh, Pete Dunn. Not giving Midtown Manhattan the satisfactory of perfect 10 shots to the turnbuckle. Pete's going to get his satisfactory another way. That's incapacitating his man he respects in Tyler Bate. And respect goes out the window when the bell sounds, and Pete Dunn will stop at nothing to be a champion once again here in the WWE. So far, we know that one half of the WWE Tag Team Champions in Dragon Lee will meet Wesley in one semifinal matchup next Sunday. Who awaits Chad Gable, who was just victorious in a hell of a bout against TNA's Frankie Kazarian? It will be one of these two superstars, whether it's the current champion in Tyler Bate or what could be the new Cruiserweight Champion in Pete Dunne. But I wonder if Pete Dunne will have the same courage and guts to put the championship on the line Obviously, a decision made by the champion if he can win this matchup. 
He done just using his surroundings to his advantage at the moment. Now sends Tyler Bate back inside the ring. The interesting thing about this contest is Pete Dunne needs to get the job done between the ropes if he not only wants to advance, but wants to win the Cruiserweight title. Certainly stacks the odds against Tyler Bate. And Tyler Bate, nice reversal that time. Whatever Pete Dunne saw, Tyler Bate saw it coming first. Once again, the big strong boy pulls him right back in. Nice head scissors takedown. Talked about Pete Dunne spoiling Tyler Bates' reign as the NXT United Kingdom champion all the way back in 2017. Once again, we are in a similar position as Pete Dunne is the challenger of Bates, the champion sunset flip. Tyler going for the pinfall. Not over yet. Dead center of the ring, however. Great ring positioning away from the ropes. Pete Dunne forced to extend some energy to kick out and survive and there's Tyler Bates showing why he has earned his nickname as the big strong boy off the German suplex follows it up with a Saito Pete Dunn dropped right on his dome and now the cruiserweight champion is starting to feel it now he's getting his mojo back after an early onslaught from the bruiserweight Pete Dunn on spaghetti legs. Tyler Bate not rushing. This is champion instincts right here. Off the middle buckle and delivers one hell of an uppercut. Patience by Tyler Bate that time proves to be a benefactor as now Pete Dunn trying to tur turn the tides of this matchup. Tyler Bate set to the corner, not by will, but by force of the challenger. And again, this is where Pete Dunn thrives, slowing down the matchup. Throwing fists, throwing kicks, using his exposed knees, using the surroundings to his advantage. Anything to bone by bone pick apart his opponent. Almost scored the pinfall that time off the powerbomb, slingshot it out of the corner. Ever impressive by a man who knows a thing or two about holding gold. Tyler Bate getting sent inside out. And there's a kick out. The big strong boy still alive. Pete Dunne, you saw a sign of desperation it seemed in his facial expression. Trying to put the exclamation point on this matchup, but Tyler Bates saw it coming from a mile away. Who says Pete Dunne's the only one who can throw some close fist? Tyler Bates ain't afraid of an old school fight. And now sending Dunn right to the bank, right to the post, excuse us. Tyler Bate proven to be resilient once more, but does he have enough left in the tank to retain his Cruiserweight Championship? This has been a physical matchup thus far. Pete Dunn may be rocked off that series of strikes. He's got to get his wits about him now or never. Because Tyler Bates' wheels are spinning and he's going soaring like Spider-Man here in Manhattan. Tyler Bate never been afraid to put his own body in harm's way in the means of success. And Tyler showing anything you can do, I can do better. You want to use your surroundings to try to beat me down. Tyler Bate looking to beat Pete Dunne in his own game. Off the barricade and now, Asai Moon Salt to the outside. Tyler Bate is feeling it here in Midtown. Just when you thought that Pete Dunne had taken the wind out of his sails, the big strong boy rises like a phoenix and shows why he has been the cruiserweight champion since the month of July. Down and out is the bruiserweight as we take this fight back inside the ring. Senior referee Charles Robinson from SmackDown calling the action. The title is on the line. Pete Dunne starting to unload. This is the only way he knows how to get back into the line of fire. And that starts swinging. There is a reason that Dunne is a former NXT United Kingdom champion and tag team champion as well. Two-time Intercontinental champion. Pete Dunne as physical as they come. One of the roughest and the toughest in the entire WWE locker room. Tyler Bate already knew it. Now he's getting reminded of it. Tyler Bate 
looking worse for wear at the flip of a coin. Axe Hammer, which has got to feel like a ton of bricks this late in the matchup. And there is nothing pretty about the offense. The peak done is dishing out and is simply effective. See Tyler Bate, almost an unenthusiastic kick out that time. Obviously expended a lot of energy a few moments ago with that dive to the outside. The moonsault that followed, but there's Tyler Bates shifted into a different gear. Maybe he's got something left. Oh no, Pete Dunn in the fireman's carry position. We have seen this trick pulled out of the hat before by the Cruiserweight Champion. Around and around we go. Pete Dunn's gonna be feeling a little bit dizzy when he gets out of this. Down to the canvas. Bate feeling the effects, but realizes he's got to capitalize. Pete Dunn still in this matchup. A kick out that time by the challenger. And what a contest we have between these two familiar foes in Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn. International talents on American soil, fighting for one of the richest prizes in the WWE. And of course, the quarterfinal round of the CWC continues right here in this matchup. Who will meet Chad Gable next week in the semis? Oh no, perched on the top was Pete Dunn, but now he's hoisted in the air and all the blood is rushing to the dome. What a suplex! Delayed vertical by the champ. Manhattan coming unglued. Pete Dunn looking up at the lights of Hammerstein. Tyler Bate dropping a high elevation knee. But still, we are not done yet. No conclusion to be found. Pete Dunn will not be denied. Pete Dunn has really re-come into his own over the last few months. Started building momentum for himself on SmackDown. It bled into the first round of the CWC with a victory over Noam Dar. He is not looking to see all that hard work go up in smoke. Just when you thought Dunn was down and out. Now it's the Bruiserweight who finds himself in the driver's seat. Snap in the arms of Tyler. And right there, says all that we can about Pete Dunn's offense. Down and gritty. Another shot right to the shoulder blades, to the neck area. And now, goes into the cover. Realizes Tyler may be beat. But Pete Dunn, as much as that offense, is absolutely grueling to deal with. He is going to need to find an exclamation point to put on this matchup. Hold on here, Tyler. Nowhere to run. Slingshot by the Bruiserweight. Tyler Bate in trouble as Pete Dunn is trying to find any answer to keep down a man who has held the Cruiserweight Championship for over 100 days. On the outside of the ring, power bomb at ringside. That is gonna hurt like hell. Tyler's gonna need some ice after this contest. Pete Dunn not done just yet. In Zaguri. Dunn has had no problem wrestling some of this matchup on the outskirts. But again, as we mentioned earlier on, he's got to get it done inside of the ring, in between the ropes, if he not only wants to advance, but wants to win the Cruiserweight Championship. Tyler with enough wherewithal to create some separation, and now it's the champion who brings this fight back between the ropes. He done approaches, and Tyler Bate, sense of urgency that time, hanging the Bruiserweight up in the top. It's a springboard, nice maneuver. Tyler just trying to find anything to keep Pete Dunn off his back for a few moments so he can recalibrate. Vintage bait that time. Pete Dunn set to the ropes. Tyler Bate once again showing why he's the big strong boy and once again showing why he is the champion today. Resilient as all hell. 
Heat Dot has instituted some absolutely beat down, break it down, brutal offense throughout this matchup, and somehow Tyler May has continued to find a way to survive. But will he continue to thrive? Look to be going for another sunset flip. Does not elect for the pinfall this time. Well, wait a minute here. Tyler could have just been using that maneuver to reposition Pete Dunne. Ingenious as he sets up the bruiser weight for the Tyler driver. 97 and finds victory dead center of the canvas. Tyler Bate, damn near a veteran move that time. Leaning on the sunset flip out of the corner to reposition the bruiser weight away from the ropes and deliver his exclamation point. The Tyler driver to retain the title and move on in this oh so great tournament. What a matchup between these two familiar foes as Tyler Bate once again holds his championship in his hands. We take a look at the updated bracket. It started with 16. We are down to four. All roads lead to next week. It is the semifinals of the Cruiserweight Classic. Wesley one-on-one -on -one with one half of the WWE Tag Team Champions in Dragon Lee. And then as we have found out over the last half hour and change, Chad Gable gets a championship opportunity against Tyler Bate. The gold continues to be on the line. The big strong boy pushes forward as the semifinals commence in just seven nights. We thank you for joining us here in Hammerstein, live from Midtown Manhattan. The Cruiserweight Classic Tournament continues live right here next week.